The Toreador are a clan of vampires known for being some of the most beautiful, the most seductive, the most emotional of the vampire clans. They are everything that I am not. Rare. It is said that the clan founder, Arakel, was a mortal painter or a sculptress. Very well known within the first city and famed throughout the land. On this mural, it represented the past, the present, and the future of kindred society. Kane, when he saw this mural, was obviously not a fan of the arts because he saw a very terrible future for the clan, and he cursed them with the affliction that the Toreador carry today. An obsession with anything that relates to or resembles art in any form or fashion. The clan has two divisions. You have the artists and the posers. Now, I would say that you would put a bit of a, a French pronunciations on these because if you're going to do this, you have to sound pretentious. So you would have the division of the artistes or the division of the poseurs. You really got to put some smug on it. Now the artist division, they are sculptors, painters, musicians, writers. They consider themselves to be the real Toreador. Some of you may come after me for the pronunciation of this, such as Toreador. If you really wanted to throw some smug on that, I suppose you could do that too, but I'm gonna call them the Toreador. Now the posers on the other side, they are the failed artists. They are the critics. They are ones whose art isn't recognized in a traditional sense. And the names used for these two divisions are not used by the groups they're associated with. It's actually more of a put down by each opposing side to the other one. Now, before we get too far into today's video, if you're enjoying yourself, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, hitting the like button. And if you want to see more of this for myself, then please subscribe with the bell notification. I do have a Patreon as well, links will be in the description below. If you wanted to join me there, my patrons, they get to see a few behind the scenes projects that I'm working on, as well as a monthly video vote. So please check that out. Some of Kindred Society have made the argument or the metaphor that the Ventru are the mind of the Camarilla. If that is the case, then the Toreador, they would be the soul. Rafael de Corazon is credited with being one of the primary figures in getting the Camarilla established. And because of this, the Toreador are some of the greatest supporters of the Camarilla traditions as well as Elysium. This is one of the areas where the Toreador really excel at because they get to showcase their social prowess and they get to show off their art. The Toreador have something of a reputation with the other clans, being that they are perceived to be these deep V shirt wearing blustery blowhards talking about their lost humanity and nobody understands them, woe is me, somebody call me a wambulance. The reality though is most of those types of Toreador are too busy working on their own art pieces, their own art projects. They will not interact with society as a whole very much, if at all. Instead, this image is allowed to be perceived and continue to be pushed, actually, by some of the Toreador who look at social maneuvering as a form of art. And if a Toreador wants to ruin your life, they can absolutely do that with a whisper in the right ear. The Toreador who are really good at playing these social games, they've had to pick up the pace a little bit as it were, because over the last century with the advent of the internet and those moving pictures, art has changed and it continues to change at a rapid pace. And a lot of the Toreador who are excited by this, but they're also playing catch up and discovering what new forms art can take. This also means that over the last 100 years, the clan has become much more varied. Toreador come from a noble lineage. They have royalty in their blood and some of the hardliners, the purists, they want to keep it that way. They view these new forms of art as a pollution to the bloodline. And this calls out specifically some of the street artists who have been brought into the fold. Some of the Wall Street giants who look at stock trading algorithms as a form of art. Even some movie producers can be a Toreador because it is a form of artistic expression, especially when it comes to CGI. And again, the hardliners, they don't view this as a worthwhile or worthy form of art. 
This means that there's a lot of clan infighting over what is and isn't considered art. Because it's so subjective, there are just as many opinions about what is and isn't or should and shouldn't be. Because of this, the Toreador are a little bit more loose in their hierarchy. There isn't a rigid structure to it. If there is a clan meeting called, while it is nice of you to show up, it is not expected that you will show up. And these meetings will be varied because they could just be a simple dinner party. They could be an art gallery showing. It could be an actual formal meeting. Toreador in a city, they arrange themselves into guilds. And whether or not they are artists or posers, it doesn't really matter. Usually what ends up happening is the most senior or the oldest Toreador is the head of the guild. And these guilds have many complicated, not common sense rules that must be followed. This probably has something to do with the resemblance of high society without actually being high society and the fact that artists are enigmatic. Going back to the early days of the Toreador, they had a very strong influence on the early culture of Greece. Many of the tales and folklore that came out of that specific period of time, the Toreador attribute to humankind and vampire interacting with each other in negative ways, and those stories have been appropriated by the mortals. What is known for sure is that the Toreador infighting weakened the first civilization of the Mycenae. The Toreador were feeding on them for strength and bolstering their population. However, when the civilization fell, the Toreador became too weak to defend themselves. There was a very small event that happened. The Mycenae were destroyed by the Dorians. This forced the Toreador to cross the Mediterranean into the Ventru-controlled Rome. Some were also taken in by the Carthage-controlled Bruja. Now these two sides, they didn't like each other and they were fighting a very aggressive war against each other. And for a while, the Toreador were playing both sides. When it was finally understood that Carthage was going to lose, the Toreador that were within that city, well, they defected back to Rome and they brought with them some stories, if you will, rumors, and the Toreador influence from those that came from Carthage to Rome. This prompted the Roman Ventru to raise Carthage to the ground. When Rome's glory started to fall, there was a Toreador by the name of Mikael. He deserted Rome to follow Constantine in Nova Roma. He left to construct the dream. Now the dream was supposed to be a utopian vampire paradise. This desertion shocked many of the elders at the time. And Mikael was successful in his construction of the dream. Now this happened in Constantinople. Constantinople was a beacon of glory to the vampires as well as Canite society until it was sacked by the Fourth Crusade in 1204. As I mentioned, art is the cornerstone of the Toreador clan. Being that it's also their curse, it shapes every aspect of the Toreador's life. Unlife. The curse calls to them to seek out and satisfy that artistic urge, no matter what that may be. And it's from this passion and desire to either save or preserve or keep going some form of art that leads to them embracing someone. One thing that is agreed on within the clan, no matter what form of art you have, is it must be prestigious. One example given for vampires that's not particularly well suited is cooking. While cooking in the restaurant industry can be prestigious, most vampires just simply can't eat the food. So it's not to say that there are vampires who don't pursue this as their passion, but there's not going to be that many of them because nobody else could share it with them except for the mortals. Now this curse of theirs has had some variance in the previous editions versus fifth edition. In the previous editions, this weakness was both a blessing and a curse. The Toreador were slaves to whatever caught their attention. They would stand there and stare at it for hours, provided you failed your willpower roll. Anything could have got their attention, anything that they found beautiful. Art, physical beauty, a sunrise. Don't get stuck looking at that one. Now this curse explains why so many of the Toreador were able to fall in love with mortal humans. But this curse also prevented them from ever reaching perfection. And even though they could never reach their peak, there was still room to grow and they couldn't get beyond that barrier. This is when 
mental breakdown started to set in. You would have a trail of bodies. You would have discarded projects, things that the vampire was trying to fill the void with, but couldn't. In 5th edition, the curse has changed a little bit. They are still drawn to beauty, to aesthetics, anything that catches their eye. However, when the Toreador is away from its muse, that's the word we'll use for it right now, they suffer from being away from that thing. And the obsession with beauty doesn't render them standing still for hours on end. However, the Toreador still get very compulsive about things. If they're spoken to, they will tie whatever their the object of their fixation is into conversation. It's the only thing they will talk or think about, so that part of it still happens. If you want to learn a little bit more about some of the other vampire clans, then please check this playlist on the screen for you now. I will do a second video on the clan variants around the Toreador next time. Thank you to all of my beautiful patrons for supporting me. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.